Joining me now to discuss the, the nationwide shock sparked by her death is the journalist and Jill's former BBC colleague who we just saw there, Jenny Bond, who had to read the news of her murder that day. Jenny, good evening. Take us back to that day in the newsroom, one I'm sure um, you'll never forget. No, you're right. I, I absolutely won't. It was a lovely day. It was a spring day, I remember, and I'd gone in, perhaps as you saw there, rather a spring suit, very light blue. Um, the day was progressing in quite a boring fashion, I think, actually, um, when suddenly the newsroom, which is such a vibrant, noisy place, you will know there's always a buzz going on and people talking, um, it went incredibly quiet and people started whispering and they said there's, there's been a shooting and People are saying it's Jill, and no one could believe it. We just couldn't believe it. It, it was it was too much to take in. Um, Jill had been so so vibrant, so alive. Who was due in? I think later that day, um, and we didn't go straight ahead with the news. We were absolutely determined. Didn't matter what other news organisations were doing. We were not going to broadcast that news until it was utterly confirmed that her nearest and dearest have been told, her brother Nigel, her father, Alan Farthing, her fiancé, of course. So I don't think we were the first to broadcast the news, but that absolutely didn't matter. Right. Um, and it fell to me to make that announcement. My bosses came up to me and said, are you OK? Can you do it? I said, yeah, I can do it. I, you know, I've done Diana's death. And, and um, so we, we broadcast it, but the, the sadness in the newsroom was... Well, it was, it was, of course, it was sad. It was utter, utter shock. And then just talk us through the weeks and the days that followed after you've made that announcement. Some of the details become clear, but also the BBC itself is getting, from my understanding, and tell us what happened. First of all, messages from the public sharing in the horror, like you and your colleagues, but also some really quite nefarious messages coming in too. I wasn't part of what went on after that, you know. I was I was the royal correspondent and part-time newsreader, so I, I wasn't aware of, of the comments that were all coming in. All I knew was that the outpouring of love and affection for Jill, because, you know, she was... I, was, I wasn't a bosom buddy of... Uh, just, I was a work colleague. We didn't socialise much outside the newsroom, um, although she, she did used to take me to a certain fashion house, um, because uh, probably people imagine that when you read the news on telly, you get some kind of amazing dress allowance. There's no allowance whatsoever. Um, and so Jill and I used to go to this fashion house and uh, they would lend us suits. <laughs> I don't know if it was allowed or not, but anyway, they lent us lots of suits. So we go along there. Um, and she was just so natural and so, so lovely that, yes, there was an outpouring from the public uh, and all I saw coming in um, mm. were messages of, of enormous sadness and support. Yeah. Uh, we've seen sort of some of the vibrancy just from e even those very brief clips that we had there, her real charm and charisma and how she connect, could connect with people. But then... Yeah, I think of her every day, actually. I think of her every day when I... Well, not every day, when I'm coming on telly or something like this um, and I sort of do my hair. And I always remember Jill come, coming to the makeup room and said, oh, look at your hair, it's all too clumpy. Look, you need some wax, you need a bit of wax and should should help me to sort of separate it. And I still do that to this day. And so, <laughs> practically every day, I, I still think of her. And you know that was a measure of how... How generous she was, because ours is quite a bitchy industry, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of jealousy, very inflated egos, and despite her enormous fame, um, so famous that on the day she died, the Queen paid tribute, the Home Secretary paid tribute. Despite all of that and her huge success, she was so down to earth and so charming. I know people say that all the time, you know, she was the girl next door. Well, I can tell you, she really and truly was. Yeah, and as a, it sounds like as a colleague and not a competitor, uh, you've obviously exactly. got the absolute authority to say that. F final thing, Jenny, you know, in, in newsrooms, we're used to following the development of a story. How painful was it, painful was it when you realised there isn't going to be a resolution quickly to be able to try and help at least, let's say, her family's grief? Uh, yeah, it was clear that it, this was very murky and it continued and continues to be so. Um, it's funny how you picture things, don't you, all the time? And I, I can picture exactly where I was in this in this house, actually hanging out the washing when I heard mm. uh, that uh, the guy who'd been convicted of, uh, of her killing had, in fact, been Barry George. He had um, been um, uh, that 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 had been quashed. Uh, so every 
every part of that journey is imprinted on my mind. And yes, it's been interesting to take part in this documentary that's going to be coming out um, and whether we'll ever get to the bottom of who actually did this terrible, terrible thing to such a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Um, I don't know if we'll ever know. Jenny Bond, thank you so much. Former colleague of Jill Dando.